Welcome once again, my dear fellow learners. Here's your mentor, Mentor Ray, and this is part two of our topic, the Go Negotio Formula, the Entrepreneurial Mind. So let's move on to the next important issue that we're going to talk about. And this is issue number three. Do we consider who we are as a nurse as being aligned with the entrepreneurial mind? What do you think? Is it a yes or a no? I would say it's a yes. Why? Well, if we're going to take a look at the characteristics of the empowered nurse, we usually use our mind to come up with our clinical judgment, what we can do to make the patient more comfortable. And then we need to enhance our skills. We need to be competent, which is one of the five C's. We need to be compassionate, another of the five C's. But, okay, which was not explicitly mentioned in the five C's of the entrepreneurial mind is the core of our being as nurses, our caring role represented by the heart. That's why the nurse is best described with the three H. We have the head, we think, the hands, the skills, and the heart which is the very core of our profession, the caring and compassionate heart that does the job, okay? And ensures that the job is done with utmost concern for the patient's well-being. So if we need to answer the question, do we, do we consider who we are as nurses as aligned with the entrepreneurial mind? Take a look at the characteristics of the empowered nurse. Okay? Hindi ka magdadalawang isip. The answer is a resounding yes. That's why a lot of nurses has ventured into entrepreneurship like Terry Barton Salinas and Gail Barton Hay who innovated okay, the IV lines by color coding it such that when patients have multiple IV lines, it's not going to be difficult for the nurse to monitor. So this is now earning them royalties. Okay? Or you can also, pag malit lang ang punan, you can do a, a, <laughs> a business like this. Face bull. <laughs> Very nice recall. Pwede naman yan. Meron naman tayong subject na nutrition. So put it into practice. Face bull. Or <laughs> Starbucks, <laughs> salon and spa, malapit to yun sa amin. Eh. I usually get pictures of the things I get to see around. Okay, uh, Starbucks, for example, marami nagpapa, nagpapapicture yan sa signage na yan. But it, you know, it attracts attention. But what's important is that it delivers the message. Okay? Except the face bowl. Kasi face, asan yung fish doon? Naging face bowl. Okay? And then Starbucks, it talks about hair. So this is a salon. Okay? So, let's take a look at the World Health Organization key facts and figure things out. Do we really need to nurture our entrepreneurial mind to become entrepreneurs after nursing? Or should we use our expertise, our skills, our knowledge to take care of patients. Let's take a look at the facts. What is the WHO telling us? Nurses and midwives account for nearly 50% of the global health workforce. There is a global shortage of health workers, in particular nurses and midwives, who represent more than 50% of the current shortage in health workers. They need us as nurses. So we can do entrepreneurship on the side, okay? The largest needs-based shortages of nurses and midwives are in Southeast Asia and Africa. That's very true. We're feeling it now. For all countries to reach sustainable development goal number three on health and well-being, the World Health Organization estimates that the world will need an additional 9 million nurses and midwives by the year 2030. So kahit siguro yung apo natin mag-nursing, <laughs> Aabot pa siya shortage. I remember mga naturuan ko. Uh, naturuan ko from the tita to the pamangkin to the apo okay, ng isang buong henerasyon. 
And then sabi, sir, huwag ka muna magre-retire. Sabi ko, bakit? Yung kapatid ko, ah, mag, ah, ano pa, magna-nursing. Ah, okay. Gusto ko, maturoan mo rin siya. Okay. Sabi ko, o oh, anong year na ba siya sa nursing? Sabi, sir, grade 2 pa lang. <laughs> I can just imagine. Ilang taon na ako noon, ugod-ugod na ako. Okay? And look at this class. Is US headed for worse nursing shortage? Okay. Currently, they have a shortage of 690,000. And the country will need, meaning the US, 4,579,275 nurses in total by 2022 to keep up with the required demand. You can just... Imagine, no matter how many nurses we produce in our country, we cannot supply okay, the U.S. to diminish this demand. Ang dami. Okay? So, the question now is, should we stay as nurses or should we be entrepreneurs? That's one thing you have to consider. I will not dictate upon you on what you want because in the same manner, When I decided that I will become an entrepreneur instead of a bedside nurse, my parents respected the idea. Okay? So, in the Philippines, nurses are the most numerous health workers. And the Philippines is the largest source of registered nurses working overseas. However, there will be minimal graduates from 2020 to 2022 due to the K-12 adjustments. That's very true. So it confounds the shortage. So the impact of the pandemic on the professional licensure exam schedule, which is usually being postponed or rescheduled, and then the slow implementation of salary adjustments and release of benefits of nurses is becoming a demotivation for a lot of nurses to continue in bedside nursing. And of course, parental fear of the COVID exposure of students in the clinical area. So a lot of schools, they're allowing their students to go on leave of absence because the parents would not permit their students to have hospital clinical duty. And of course, maldistribution of nurses, non-nursing opportunities versus hospitals. Like a lot of nurses are in BPOs, okay? So the question is this, Are we ready to keep up with the global demand for our professional services? I don't think so. But are we ready to abandon being bedside nurses and become entrepreneurs? I also don't think so. So let us take a look at some factors that could be worth considering. As of 2019, one in every three humans on planet Earth will be a Gen Zer. So what does that mean? A growing number of Gen Zers are interested in forging career paths in sports, music, and fashion. They're not interested in becoming a nurse. Konting Gen Z or lang ang gusto maging nurse. Therefore, nursing, the entry-level hospital practice, is no longer among the top 20 highest paid professions. That's according to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics as of September 2020. But my friends there now are telling me that nurses who are being asked to return to their jobs are being paid as much as $150 to $250 per hour. That's how bad the shortage is. It's no longer per day, per hour. And some would have a minimum salary of $1,000 per day because they need nurses. Bigla niyo sasabihin, ayoko na maging entrepreneur, doon nala ako sa magiging nurse. <laughs> I'm showing you both sides of the coin so that you can make an informed decision. I'm not going to lure you to become an entrepreneur when the times would call that you should be a bedside nurse, okay? Okay. I would just give you the idea, the facts, the beauty of both sides, and it's up to you to make the decision. So issue number four would be how to nurture the entrepreneurial mind. Is it through role modeling or earning a degree? Remember, Mr. Millian, the dog whisperer, didn't have a degree. But he became famous, earned a lot, had a TV show, had a lot of products. What we need is not a degree. What we need is a mentor or a role model who can show us the way. That's why we're doing this course now. This, has, this should have been part of the curriculum for the longest time. But I'm so glad it's now part of the curriculum. So allow me to be a little more personal at this point in time. So let, let me share with you 
how did I start as an entrepreneur? Well, initially, I was a Jollibee crew member while I was still doing my nursing course at USD. This is me. <laughs> 110 pounds, no, 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 <laughs> maybe 70 pounds ago. That was how Badui, the uniform of Jollibee is, orange and brown, brown pants and orange. So after my classes at USD, I would usually go to Jollibee, Holiday Plaza, and then uh, I would do my things, a grill station ako assigned, and I will have to be, I usually am the closing crew for the grill station there was one thing that that's very funny that happened to me okay, I'll, I'll tell you in a while okay this is in relation to my salary look sa isang quincenas 928.93 pesos because my salary per hour is 11.25 but nung first hour ko sa Jollibee just ko po ano nangyari sa sir well kasi I wanted to become a member of the elite 60 seconds club. So gusto ko lahat ng ginagawa ko, natatapos ko in 60 seconds. So dapat mabilis ka. So nung in-order ako ng production controller na buksan ko, okay, yung, uh, yung ketchup, nagmamadali ako buksan. Eh, ang, ang, ang ketchup sa Jollibee, nasa lata-lata. Eh, ang ketchup lang naman sa bahay, yung mga Nelly, kung papa, nasa bote yun, na pag wala nang alaman yung bote, lalagyan mo na ng tubig, aalog-alog, ilalagyan mo sa platito. Hindi ako sana. Eh. Nagbubukas ako ng lata, eh, bote lang sa bahay. So, kabibilis ko, kabibilis ko, hindi ko nabuksan na maayos na tapon ng kalahati ng lata ng ketchup. Sa takot ko mapagalitan ako, it was my first due today at baka ako ma-terminate. Okay? Kinuha ko ngayon ng map. Map ako ng map. At di ba yung map ili mo yan para isaw-saw mo ngayon doon sa timba. pag lift kong gano'n, natusok ko yung diffuser. E yung diffuser namin, pag, pag hila kong gano'n, nahulog ang buong diffuser. So nagkalat na ang ketchup, nagkalat na ang diffuser. E may nag-order ng burger. Okay, pinabuksan sa akin ang pickles. Hindi ko na isara ang pickles pagkabalik. Ngayon yung inventory officer, nagbibilan ng pickles. Doon pala niya dinadampot yung pickles. Sa takip ng pickles. E hindi ko na isara yung lid ng pickles. Pag bitbit niya ng pickles, warak ang dalawa basag. Sabi, sabi gano'n. Sino yung huling nagbukas ng pickles? Hindi ako kumikibo. <laughs> and of course, I admitted my mistakes. So what happened was, syempre, <laughs> na-office ako at ang na-compute nga ay 1,500 plus yung nasira ko on my first hour sa Jollibee. Eh, ang sweldo ko sa isang kinsenas, 928.93 lang. Sabi ng kapatid ko, hala, tatanda ka na dyan sa Jollibee, bayad utang ka na. <laughs> But of course, I was determined because I needed a job. Kasi nga, syempre, magkano lang naman ang, ang uh, allowance ko nung araw. So, kailangan kong magtrabaho. So, I, I, I tried my very, very best to learn from my mistakes and to better what I do on a day-to-day basis. Then eventually, ito yung masaya. Okay? Then yung ID ko pa pala nun. Oh, that's, uh, that's how I am. Six, 70 pounds ago. Okay? Then eventually, nakasama ko yung may-ari ng Jollibee, si Sir Tony Tancacchong. That's me. Mukha pa rin akong tatay dyan. <laughs> okay. A lot of my students used to tell me, Sir, mas bata kang tignan ngayon. Okay. Sir, saan yan? We both represented the Philippines in the World Entrepreneur Summit in Singapore in 2005. And I was inducted as the first nurse entrepreneur to become a member of the prestigious Ernst and Young Entrepreneur of the Year Academy. Okay? And that's because I once was awarded as Entrepreneur of the Year. Of course, whoever, whatever I am, whoever I am now, I owe it to my mom. Yan naman ang nanay ko. Lagi ko ang sinasabi, pag merong forum, Sir, paano mo narating yung narating mo? Isa lang sinasabi ko, mahadera po kasi ang nanay ko. <laughs> My mom raised me to be entrepreneurial. Kinder pa lang ako, papasok ako sa eskwelahan, may kahon na ako na paninda. At uuwi akong ubus ang pininda at wala rin pinagbentahan. <laughs> but that's how my mother raised me. Lumaki ako na nagtutulak ng kariton sa palengke. Lumaki ako na alam ko magkano na lang ay nauuwing pera ng nanay ko. Lumaki ako na alam ko ang repercussions ng paglo-loan sa Bombay at sa mga lending company sa negosyo. 
Kaya iniwasan ko lahat yon. The things I practice as an entrepreneur, I experience it firsthand because my mom wanted me to see it. That's how she raised me. I don't have an MBA. I don't have a master's in entrepreneurship. My siblings all had master's degree, either in business ad or entrepreneurship. But whenever we have discussions, they would say, how did you get that idea? And I would take a look at my mom. Sabi niya, iba, dapat si mama ang naging din namin. <laughs> okay. So what's my secret? My secret is my one, two, three formula. So what's my one, two, three formula? What is one? One idea. When I started to uh, uh, with a business, isang idea lang. Huwag yung masyadong madami at a time. No? Mag-focus ka sa isa, yung kaya mong gawin. Sabi nga ng nanay ko, dapat mas marunong ka kaysa sa empleyado mo. Pwedeng all around ka, go. And ano yung kaya mong gawin? Mm, magsulat. <laughs> so nung ako'y fresh graduate, nagsulat-sulat ako ng manual, psychiatric nursing, ganyan. Mimeograph pa nung araw. At ang nag-sort out nito ay ang nanay at tatay ko. Okay? So pina-softbound pina, uh, namin, binenta-benta namin sa students. Okay? Sa probinsya na. Okay? Then, syempre, mapangarapin akong tao. Gusto kong i-level up. Nag-create ako ng libro. Sumulat ako sa Mosby. Sabi ko, I am this, I am that. <laughs> and then, after a while, I received a letter. I was so excited. And then, what was in the letter? Well, the manuscript was very courteously rejected. <laughs> the expected happened. But, but, okay, it wasn't rejected based on content. It was rejected because the format was just too ahead of its time. Kasi marami siyang games, marami siyang crossword puzzle, okay? So, eventually, nireject ako ng Mosby. I persevered a la KFC. I went to another publisher, presented my book. This time, I wrote NTLEX RN in a flash for um, Barnes & Nobles USA, okay? I, Jones & Bartlett USA, rather. Barnes & Nobles was the bookstore, okay? And then... What I did is that ayoko makipag-compete sa mga greats. So, I would want to create something that would just complement the existing books but making sure that it is different. Paano naging iba yung libro mo, sir? Hmm? Each page has a flow chart. The functional concept then applied to an answer. The functional concepts method is my innovation in spite of actually my advanced studies in the States. I now have my own functional concepts method of lecturing. And it has been adopted in 25 countries worldwide. Okay. You see how one talent of writing can influence people to get to see, oh, oh nga, no, pwede palang ganyan ituro at ipresent yan. Okay. So the reason why this book was successful is that it never competed with what is in there. So when this was tagged as customer's favorite in Barnes & Nobles, and actually it was one of my students in the States who called me up and told me, Sir, hey, I saw your book. It was, it was tagged customer's favorite. I'm so happy. Okay? And eventually, Mosby sent me a letter if I can write a book for them. And so I wrote the ABC of Passing, the NPLEX RN. Okay? Masaya lang ako. Nandiyan si Lippincott, nandiyan si Saunders. Kasama na ang inyong abang lingkod. <laughs> Ray Gapos. Yan lang naman yung pinangarap ko eh. I remember when I wrote these books, katabi ko pa sa kama yan nung napublish. And then my mom would ask me, ano ba yan anak? Fulfilled ka na ba? Sabi ko, ma, pwede na akong barilin sa luneta kinabukasan. <laughs> okay. So eventually, they asked me to write most business essential concepts for the Philippine Nurse Licensure Exam. That became the first Filipino authored book that was awarded as winner in the International Book Awards in 2010. Kung titignan natin, nag-umpisa lang sa ganito napunta na sa award-winning book. You'll never know where your imagination and your dreams will take you. Just believe. That's the most important thing. So what is number two? One, one idea. Ano yung dalawa? Nung nag-umpisa ako, dalawang empleyado lang meron ako. Sino yung dalawang yan? Sino pa? Ang nanay ko, 
At ang tatay ko, yan ang aking nanay, ito ang aking tatay, at ito ang aming bahay noon. Okay? Bahay kubo, ni pahat. And this is the, the picture that would always remind me to be grounded. The picture that would always tell me where I'm from. Lagi ko yung nililingon. Because it tells me how far I have been. And I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be speaking before you today, inspiring you to do the same. Had it not been for the dynamic duo in my life. Of course, my mother and my father. And of course, e kung yung one idea, yung two employees, sir, ano yung three? Nung nag-umpisa po ako sa aking negosyo, tatlong estudyante lang po ang naniwala sa akin. And while I'm doing my lessons, dalawa dun sa estudyante yun, apathetic. <laughs> so pag nag-joke ako, isa na lang ang katawanan ko. At pag umabsin pa yung isa, ako na lang ang tumatawa sa sarili ko. But, I never gave up. I was determined. I persevered. I believed my time will come. And so, if we're going to take a look at what's important that would enable us to shape our entrepreneurial mind, I can identify three important things. Life experiences, like the dog whisperer, role model like Bill Gates and the rest, and of course, the environment that allowed me to grow. These three main factors nurtures the entrepreneurial mind. And allow me, class, to share with you why do we need our parents to guide us as we aspire to become entrepreneurs. I will not answer that, but I'll share with you an anecdote. Well, kung ang isang bata binigyan ng task, kulayan ang kolerun book. Kung hindi sinupervise ng magulang, magmamadali ang bata kung hindi niya yung gustong gawin. Lalabas, ganito ang pagkakulay. Pero pag sinupervise ang magulang, gumaganda ang pagkakulay. So kung itong mga batang nagkulay na ito, ay magiging tattoo artist or painter in the future, no kaya itsura ng trabaho nila? Siyempre yung na, napatnubayan ng magulang, yung may guidance, no naging tattoo artist, satisfied ang tattoo clients. Bakit? Ito yung binigyan na picture, ganda lumabas yung tattoo. Yung hindi napatnubayan ng magulang, dahil nasanay siyang ganyan ng trabaho niya, nung may nagpatato, ganun din. <laughs> Ang lumabas. So in essence, the raw side of our entrepreneurial mind should be properly molded by the guidance of our parents. So the fifth issue that I'm going to ask you, class, are entrepreneurs born or made? Well, those who say that entrepreneurs are born that's actually not realistic or it's a silly idea because how come we are having entrepreneurship as part of our nursing course? So it simply means that it can be learned. And therefore, I can say entrepreneurs are made. So if you want to find out if you are an entrepreneur, I'm asking you to take a short online quiz to find out. Go to the site, type it, and take the quiz and find out for yourself if you could be an entrepreneur. Always remember, to be an entrepreneur, everything begins with an idea. And the idea could emanate from the three eyes, which are well, information, what are the market needs, what are the trends, okay? What is going on on the internet, okay? What are the business that are on uptrend? What are the needs of the people? Second would be, what irritates you? Irritation could also be a source of business idea. Like, for example, you get irritated dun sa smell ng CR. You need a deodorizer. You, need, uh, you get irritated by the smell of 
the underarm. So you need a deodorant. Okay? Ganun lang yun. You, you get irritated by your spouse dahil madada. Okay? That's why you go to nightclubs. <laughs> Beer house. See? Any, any irritation could result to an entrepreneurial idea. Or you could also turn your hobbies, your passion into business ventures. Okay? So, let me leave you with a horoscope of mine a couple of years back, but this has always inspired me. It says, make sure you love for the work. Make sure you have love for the work you are doing. If your work is not inspired by a true love from within, then quit your job and find something else. Follow your passion, follow your heart, and the money and opportunities will follow naturally. Amen to that. So this is your mentor, Mentor Ray, saying thank you for sticking out with our discussion today, and I'll meet you soon for our other topics. Once again, thank you. <music>